I want to ask you a question. What do you think most of residents of North Tahoe, when they drive by this church, that this is, you don't got to answer me, okay? This isn't a conversation now. Think about this. What do you think most people who drive by this church that maybe don't go to church, maybe that they don't claim Christ as their Lord, what do you think they think of this church? Do you think it's positive, indifferent, negative? I would suggest all of, all of them. You know, we can't control, we can influence what people think, we can't control them. But I want to talk to you about what we are doing here to try to get the people of North Tahoe to grasp what a great Savior we have and how we, as His people, want to minister to the communities of North Tahoe. And, and there's an expression... There's an expression that I talk about in marriage counseling with people. When there's people who are fighting, I'll look at the couple individually and I'll say, do you believe she is for you? Do you believe he is for you? It's amazing to see how many times couples say, I don't believe he's for me. I don't believe she's for me. And so I want to use that expression to talk about the communities of North Tahoe. Do they believe we are for them? And the idea of, we actually want to start like a campaign here this fall that Cornerstone Community Church is for North Tahoe. We are for them. We want to show them that by the way we serve them. And there's multiple ways we do that, both how we go out into the community and how when we invite them here, the experience they have when they're here. And so I want to give you that vision now, that, that, that idea of what we're trying to accomplish and tell you some of the things we're doing. And this is the part where, where I decided to do this in the service this morning. Instead of having a special meeting afterwards, where, where less of you stay around, I wanted you all here to hear this. But I know there's visitors here today, so I thank you for your patience with us. And um, um, stay with me. So let me tell you some of the things we're doing. Um, in order for North Tahoe to believe we are for them, we have to engage different things. You, you ever heard the expression, I use it all the time, God does not steer a parked car. Think about that. God doesn't steer a parked car. You used to say, God, use me, and you never get off the couch. He's never going to use you. You've got to get up and move. You take step one, he shows you step two. He steers a moving car, not a parked car. So let me tell you some of the things we're doing here that we're trying to, by, by investing some of the money you've given, I want, that's why I want to be accountable to you, what we're trying to do, give you an update of things we're doing. So like, for instance, we have replaced the carpet downstairs. If you ever go downstairs, you know that carpet was embarrassing. So when we invite the community here for, for weddings and for funerals and public events, and they go downstairs, they say, man, this is ugly. Well, guess what? We replaced it, and it's beautiful. Go downstairs and see. It smells brand new. It's kind of cool. Um, we're developing a brand new website. And, and the website, our, our current website is very limited in what we can do with it. And so Eric Knopf is over there developing it, and Bree is helping with this. Multiple people will be involved in it. A beautiful website. So when someone comes and searches for a church in North Tahoe, our website will come up. And Eric has these cool tricks where ours will come up first. Just don't tell Jeff at the Presbyterian Church that. But, um, um, and, and so he's put a lot of work into this, and this is, this is expensive to get this done, but it's very essential that we have a website that is very easy to use and gets the word out who we are. We are purchasing a generator that will empower this entire building, and we've already been approved by the Red Cross to be an emergency um, command center, you might say. Whether or not we use this as a command center for the police or the fire department, or we use it as an emergency shelter for people. We've been approved by the Red Cross to do this because this generator will empower the entire building. And this is kind of nice. Remember last Christmas when the power went out in New Christmas Eve services? And we did a cappella. It was beautiful, actually. But those things happen around here. If you live in Incline Village, you know this is a regular occurrence. The power goes out. It's almost like they're torturing us. Um, but beyond that, it's an opportunity for this church to serve our community. We actually have to remove, you guys know the TRPA um, coverage rules, right? We have to remove part, parts of, about two feet of each parking lot out here in order to get the coverage to put a, a pad down to put our generator on. And it's nuts. 
But nonetheless, that's what we're doing as, a, as an outreach to this community. We want to be a, a building where people can come to in an emergency. You know, please, God, no, but what if a fire hits this valley? And people have to evacuate. We can be of service. Um, we want to start a thing. We're going to put an event on called Incline Fest. I've talked about it for now for a while. On October 5th, Saturday, we're going to turn this entire parking lot into a place where families of Incline Village in North Tahoe can come and have a blast with their families and their kids and have good food and have a, just a fun day without hammering them with the gospel. I call that pre-evangelism. We'll show them that we actually care for them and want to enjoy them. Then, if they come back, they can hear the gospel. So we're doing that. We're starting a MOPS program, Mothers of Preschoolers. If you have a preschool child, um, you're, you're qualified to come to this. And this is an incredible thing for believers and, and non-Christians, for women to get together and be supported and have fun and learn and grow. It's used all over the world mightily to reach out to young families to show them the love of Jesus. Um, we're thinking about, this is not a decision yet, we're thinking about buying a shuttle bus. We still have a lot of things to work out. Because in the wintertime, we lose our parking, as you all know, on the streets. And we don't have enough spots in the parking lot to cover the people who attend here. So we, our, our greeters out there will watch people pull into the driveway in wintertime, no parking places, and drive over there and leave. So we need a shuttle bus. We also can use a shuttle bus for things in the community that we're doing. But we, we, we need someone to run this ministry, and we need to know, is this a viable um, option for spending church money, is this the right way to spend it? So that decision is being thought through, not made yet. But if you want to be involved in a ministry that would oversee and run the shuttle, we need people to step up and say, count on me. Because we don't want to buy something that's going to sit in the parking lot and not get used. Does that make sense? Um, there's more. Um, Daryl, our music pastor, has come, and he has proposed to the elders. And by the way, we have the elder board and the finance committee. The finance committee is a group of men and women who, who have specialty in wisdom and finances. And everything we do that is a, any sense of a large purchase, especially outside the budget, goes through them first and comes to the elders. And, and Daryl has gone to the finance committee, gone to the elders to talk about, we need to upgrade our sound system. And so, Daryl, would you come on up and, and give a vision for why we are doing this? Um, Daryl... Daryl is a blessing to my heart because Daryl gets a big picture that we're not just here to sing songs on, on Sunday morning. We are here to honor God by everything we live, eat, breathe, and do. And he gets it. And so his head is so full of ideas. I said, share a few of them this morning, Daryl. Um, half of them are crazy, but half of them we can actually pull off. So... Um, so share with us. Well, thank you. You know, there's always been a little bit of a disconnect for me. I mean, Lake Tahoe is just stunning. It's a destination place. We have a lot of uh, visitors, tourists, and um, vacationers that come up, as well as um, all of us dedicated and living in this area. And uh, the facility that God gave us is stunning in its own right. And yet we fill the auditorium for a f the funeral of a, of a young man um, recently. And... How do we blend the, uh, the beauty that God created, the great facilities, and reach the people for the gospel of, of Jesus Christ? And not just come on Sunday and be edified ourselves, but how do we equip and then take it out? And so, as Tony said, I've got more ideas than I know what to do with, and half of them are crazy. Most of them are probably no good. But in thinking next year, I just started putting a list together, and... Um, we've embraced some of them. February 14th, 15th, and 16th is Valentine's Day weekend. We have booked a marriage conference. And we have a couple of high-powered marriage conference uh, leaders coming in, and we have also secured uh, the Christian band I Am They, and they're going to give us a concert that Saturday night, very special time. Um, we know that um, we talk about one church, and, and, and Tony has talked about how many churches are in North Lake Tahoe, one church. In the last couple of years, we've gotten together with three or four other churches and celebrated a Good Friday service. We want to take that to the next level and have a couple of times, once in spring and once in fall, where we have a worship service and we all gather together. And then what are we doing about the other church leaders in the area? If we're truly one church, how are we edifying and nurturing them? And so we have uh, scheduled a pastor's renewal conference, June 12th and 13th. 
and we've got some great speakers coming in for that. We're going to invite all of the area pastors, not only around the lake, down in Reno and Carson, and we want to just encourage and renew the pastors who give so much to their communities so that we can be one in mind and one in spirit. We're working on getting Matthew West to come in and do some music, and um, just... There's all kinds of ideas. At the end of May, we're thinking about doing a college retreat and having some uh, college speakers come in. I, I, during the week, if you're not here during the week, you kind of miss out on the dozens of students that walk across the parking lot getting from school to where they live. And I wonder how many of them are stopping in here and hearing what we know. And so uh, just a lot of great things that uh, God has in, in store for us. Um, a summer concert series. You know, we're just going to do some things to have fun, invite the community, and let them know what we're about. So a lot of great things happening. Um, part of what is necessary for that is making sure that this facility, this beautiful facility, matches the stunning nature of Lake Tahoe, and it does. And then the internal components can meet that same standard and that same bar. And our technology, I've always had to be the bad one to talk about technology because it's always expensive and it doesn't last forever. Um, but it's the reality and technology ages out. We have some equipment that's failing. We need to get replaced. So we've got to bring ourselves back into compliance with some new equipment that meet the new guidelines. And uh, so we're working towards that as well. Um, you know, a new soundboard. We want to get the, so the sound and audio, and I'll tell you something else. When this building was designed, like many churches, they have in, in plan to treat the walls with acoustical panels, uh, absorption and diffusion. And, you know, without those, you hear a lot of different things throughout the room, and, and it's very inconsistent, and it can get loud and trill because the sound is not absorbed and diffused like it should be. Oftentimes, it's at the end of a plan, budget overruns and costs, it's usually the thing that gets, caught, uh, gets cut. Uh, Grace in Reno just went through this. <clears throat> they cut their budget plan to do the acoustical walls and for four or five years lived with the dynamics of having that loud, uncontrollable sound. And I think they just spent about 80 grand or more treating those walls. Well, this was in the plan too, and we're going to address that so that there's gonna be consistency and control and evenness. No matter where you sit, you're all gonna hear the same thing. It's gonna be nice and crisp and not harsh. And so we want to invite this uh, presence that's very comfortable and uh, high quality. So we're working towards that. I want to leave you with just a couple of scripture verses that really has impressed upon me the direction that God is leading us. And it's not about the sound. It's not about the acoustics. It's about getting those things right so they are not the impediment, so that the message comes through clearly. And I was reading this last uh, week. Um, I read scripture every morning, and I'm in Jeremiah. And Jeremiah 32, it came across Jeremiah 32, 39, and it said, I will give them, this is the Lord speaking, I will give them singleness of heart and action so that they will always fear me and that all will go well with, for them and for their children after them. I put my Bible down and I put my head back and I was just absolutely blown away. I will give them singleness of heart and action. And I prayed right there, God, please give us that singleness of heart and action so that we can make a difference in this community and in the lives of those that live in this area and the lives that come up and visit. And it's all about this next scripture that Paul wrote to the Thessalonians. As we move on and our children come up and become the leaders and their children and their children, I want this scripture to represent our efforts today. And Paul wrote and said, we remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by the hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. And for generations down the road to look back and say, this is the generation where our work produced faith. By faith, our labor was prompted by love, and our endurance inspired by the hope in Lord Jesus Christ. That, my friends, is a legacy that we can be proud of. So I hope you join us in that. Thank you, Tony. So when, when I came here two years ago, um, this church had quite a savings account, but we didn't have a vision for it. And now this division has developed over the last couple of years by multiple people. 
the heart of that is the elder board and the finance committee. And we, we've decided we're going to keep four months budget always in reserve here. So we never go into four months budget. But this vision here is going to cost well over $300,000 to pull this off. And I believe it's money very well spent. And that's why we're doing this. Is why I want it to be accountable to you. You've donated this money. You are a kind, generous people. We want to use this to move forward. And at this point, I want to move into the sermon because you remember what, where, where are we studying the book of Acts and what's our theme verse? Pretend like you've been listening to me for the whole summer. <laughs> Acts 1.8, you receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. And where is the ends of the earth? North Lake Tahoe. That's we're here to share the love of Christ with this community, the communities of North Tahoe. That's why we're doing this. And um, there's so much more we need to do in the years ahead, but this is the beginning, the foundation of it.